Center Operations, Capacity Planning and Management video series. My name is Ben Shearer and I am a member of the product team for vCenter Operations Management here at VMware. Also note our new Twitter handle, vCenter Ops. This is the first of four videos that dive deeper into the capacity planning and optimization capabilities from vCenter Operations. Please use the direct URLs or access the YouTube VMware channel for these particular videos. For more information on the vCenter Operations Management Suite, please consider the following two videos. The first is the overview of vCenter Operations version 5 with Kit Colbert. The second is the vCenter Infrastructure Navigator Overview, done by myself. Also, access the VMware.com homepage for vCenter Operations. So without further ado, let's begin. So here we are at the vCenter Operations Manager dashboard screen. As you can see, the three badges are indicated above, indicating different scores for the different badges. Health, which is, again, immediate issues and risk and efficiency, future issues, and optimization opportunities. We're going to focus on the risk and efficiency bat badges for the duration of this particular video as they represent both capacity planning, management, and optimization. So right off the bat, what's new uh, maybe to existing users of the Capacity IQ product, and I'll point these differentiations or or added benefits uh, along the way uh, in the new 5.0 version. You look at the badges themselves, risk and efficiency represent a score. And by doing this, we are able to boil up uh, metrics and to give an overall score to the overall risk and efficiency capabilities uh, within the environment. So for risk, for example, we look at a number 30. Uh, the lower the number, the better. The least risk, obviously, the better you are in your environment. And again, this is determined, if you look at the left-hand side, at what level of your environment you're actually drilled into. So we see that, uh, for example, the world contains multiple virtual centers, your VCs. Uh, in this case, we only have one. But underneath, we have different data centers within that VC. So we're looking at everything within that world hierarchy. But for the sake of running through a scenario, as it may replicate your production scenario, we can actually drill down into both a data center object, a cluster object, or into an individual host, or even within a VM. So you can see as I drill down, for example, into this particular host within a cluster. If I move over to this particular host within the cluster, I see that the scores have changed slightly. This might be a good opportunity for us to dig in and see actually why risk in this case is at 84. So this is actually supported by three what we call sub badges. Again, these are a culmination of scores based on what resources that particular uh, level within the art of the hierarchy supports. So time remaining, uh, this tells us that we actually have an issue with time remaining. We have a capacity issue that needs to be dealt with immediately. Capacity remaining, we're OK actually in capacity. Uh, we can actually put more VMs, uh, for example, on this particular host. And stress, and stress is uh, a, a really good indicator because as in previous v videos you've seen what the health score provides you again the immediate issues that you need to fix to help your your system be uh, as healthy as possible stress is an indicator that shows you throughout the day where are your systems stressed within your environment so is it a particular day and time so for example if your systems are stressed at 8 in the morning uh, when users log in and maybe again throughout the day or even over across a, a specific or particular time um, during the week. And this is an actually an average based, again, on the analytics built into vCenter Operations Manager. So if you saw stress areas in your environment, it may not actually be a health problem per se, 
but it is an indicator of something that may go wrong down the road. So something to keep an eye on or even something to anticipate or plan for, for example. So again, giving you the tools to and the visualization and the information for you to make informed decisions on your environment by keep, for keeping it healthy and keeping it uh, current to what your current needs are, again, and your future needs. So let's drill into uh, time remaining. And then go ahead and click on the badge. So you see a f familiar interface for those who have uh, use the Capacity IQ product in the past. So we see a number of views here actually on the top, and these views actually indicate uh, uh, various views within your environment, again, indicative of this particular host that I'm clicked on right now. And I can look at all the views across this particular gallery. Time remaining, capacity, stress, waste, and density are all views. You can single those out again by just clicking on which ones make sense. Also, you can organize them uh, according to title, type, description. So if I want to see all my types and start up at the top and then of course scroll down. For example, I want to see a simple view of my virtual machine inventory in this case. I can pull that report up very quickly. Let's go back to the dashboard, talk a little bit about efficiency before we dr drill into risk even further. So efficiency represents how we can optimize our system. So these are supported, this main badge, the efficiency badge is supported by two sub badges, reclaimable waste and density. Reclaimable waste shows you a percentage of the total capacity that can be reclaimed. So in this case, it's we have 99% reclaimable waste. That means we have a lot of opportunity to actually right size this. I'm going to click on another cluster. And this is a, a cluster that has a little more activity going on it. So you can see overall the efficiency rating is 38%. Um, the, the higher in the number, the better. Obviously, the more efficient you are, the better. And you can see in this graph right here, we see that uh, we have a 94% waste. Uh, we have a little stress on the system, and we have, we're optim about 5% optimized. So right here, it tells us where our opportunities are. 40% vCPUs, so we can uh, reclaim some of those vCPUs. Uh, we can reclaim uh, optimally 2.8 terabytes of disk and 187.6 gigabytes of V memory. Obviously laid out in a nice pie graph as well. Furthermore, density tells you how much you can get out of your systems given the average workload and also given the behavior. Again, this is based on the analytics both from capacity planning and management with the underlying analytics, behavioral analytics built into vCenter Operations Manager. So what is the density? Uh, right now we're looking at about 16 to 1 density. It's a pretty good host VM to host ratio in this case. Uh, and and vCenter Operations is actually telling you we can go optimally up to almost 60 to 1 uh, VM to host ratio. Furthermore, VP CPU to CPU and vMemory to memory. Thank you for viewing part one of this four-part video series. Remember to view the rest of the videos by accessing the following URLs. This is Ben Shearer signing off.